Good morning. Well, what happened there? Well, <laughs> I guess we had a rough weekend. Good morning. Welcome to the Gospel according to Kennison. Somebody said, well, why weren't you here? Well, uh, Jack Friedman, and please like our our Facebook page on and the Gospel according YouTube, to Kennison. And YouTube. Pieces. I meant YouTube. I meant YouTube. I'm sorry. Anyhow, he says that for some reason when he downloads it, we lose the first 30 seconds. So he wanted me to like start recording and uh, and then take a few seconds before I come back. So that's what that's what I am. That's what I'm that's what I'm doing. Sherry? Yes, Anthony Golden, good morning. He was first person on there, then Jeff McLaughlin. Now Joe Sumter. Oh now they're all coming on. Yes. I I, I need to ask you a question. What you gonna ask me? What is this? That's from our sweet cousin Tammy Meyer and her hubby. They're Packers fans, so they got us a towel because they know we help fight cancer. Packers versus cancer. They also know I'm a Bears fan. <laughs> but they're Packers. But that was awful nice of them. That was awful nice of them. That's Thank you, Tammy and Craig. Yes, yes, Tammy and Craig and Meyer. Up there in Rockford, and that's it's a it says Packers versus Cancer. That's the one. That's the one fight I wish the Packers would win. Is that against the, the uh, Cancer? Anyhow, we want to thank them and and uh, for other people that send us cards and and sometimes put gifts in it. We really we really appreciate that. And Gary Witt said he's here, but he had to respond on Bill's Messenger first. Yes, he did. Um, I don't know if I should put what he said. No, you probably But he said he's not distracted today, but he's been distracted for 15 months today, I think he said. And Stephen Kaufman, good morning. I love that family. I love that family. They send me these these uh, videos of the dogs and stuff, and uh, they're, they're a wonderful family. And, uh, you know, God knows how much we can carry. You know, a lot of times we wonder why we go through things, and uh, and, and God knows how. He doesn't. He won't put more on us than we're able to bear. Uh, Sherry, we had, a, we had an interesting uh, weekend, a week, I guess, Thursday, mm -hmm. Friday, Saturday. Yes, we did. We had a, a fun weekend while helping raise money for a great cause. A lot of money. Don't know the total yet. No, but they're in Dallas. Those they don't, the rich people there, they like to show you they got a they lot of money. They came ready. And uh, we got to see old friends again that we get to see all the time. George Hamilton, uh, and you better help me here, uh, uh, Alana, Alana Stewart. Stewart, and uh, Cheryl Crow performed. Cheryl Crow performed. I actually met her, I don't know if I should tell you this, but I actually met her years ago uh, at Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. Somebody said, what were you doing up there? I was a biker. I was a biker. And she was one of the acts there at Buffalo Chips, uh, where we stayed. And when Sam uh, uh, transitioned to the next to the next level, uh, they renamed the stage the Sam Kennison Stage. And we had performed there, and I went back, I think, what six times after that. Sherry had some of the most fun I ever had. But that's where I met uh, Cheryl Crow at. And then we had Jacqueline Smith. We had. Uh, we got to visit with them. Christine Romeo. Oh, I love Christine. I was going to get to that. Now, what is their program on network? It's on, on Netflix. I mean Netflix. Love on the Spectrum. That's her daughter. Her daughter has uh, autism. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't, uh, I'm sure Christine came up with the idea, but they, they started doing a documentary. And uh, Netflix picked it up. And if I'm not mistaken, Sherry, and you can help me, I think she won three Emmys. Yes, she did. This past year, on I'm talking about the uh, daughter, won three Emmys, and uh, they're on their way to Kenya. What, what? I don't know, Christine, if they're supposed to announce that. Oh, oh, I never said nothing, folks. I never said nothing. But I, I love Christine, and uh, and we we just I, I could go on the big uh, makeup artist. Uh, yes, Tim Quinn. Tim Quinn. Uh, was there, and then the Neiman Marcus, Patrick Foley, Patrick Foley, and uh, and, and, and the real tall Mark uh, 
Mark Bradford is an artist. Yes. But his work is in Guggenheim, everything else. And the guy's like seven foot tall. And uh, they were there. And we had just a, a fantastic, fantastic time. We always love when we can all get together again. Tammy Meyer says she loves your shirt and tie. Well, thank you, because I'm going to tell you all something. <laughs> I come in and I was teasing Sherry because everybody was talking about how good looking George Hamilton still is. So I came in like I do every Sunday morning, go, how do I look? And she goes, is that, is that shirt orange or red? I go, it's red. And then I was making a joke and I go, I got up this morning and I go, what would George wear? And she said, she wouldn't wear that. I like it on you. I don't think he wears shirts and ties much. That's beside the point, Sherry. You just deflated me. Hi, Mary Zastro. Love you, too. I love her. I love her. You know what? Every, every, uh, uh, every Halloween now for the last several years, you know what? I th every time I think of Halloween, you know what I think of? Her and the Adams family. Yes. Had to be one of her best roles as far as I was concerned. She was just fantastic. I, I love... I love her and her man. And Mayor, uh, Michaela Prakish. Oh, yeah, from India. She said, have a happy, blessed Sunday. I pray that you enjoy the blessings and favor of God today as you begin this new week. And we and we do to her. We do to her and her husband. Sure, they do a fantastic work. I mean, they're over there dealing, I think, with Buddhists. And, uh, uh, and they're converting them every day. We want to remember their son. He had an appendectomy uh, performed this past week, and we want to remember him in prayer. I've been praying for him, and we want everyone else to uh, to join in that. And that brings us to different ones. I want to remember Stan Stein. Uh, they watch our program. He and his his wife watch our program, and uh, I, I I I love Sharon. Uh, both of them are Jewish. And uh, are very strict in their following of, the, of Judaism. And, and every Friday, I can't remember now, but it's something shalom that she prays for peace for the, our country, our world. Every Friday, she does that. And uh, and I've come to I've come to to love both of them. Uh, we want to remember your cousin Paulette Cup uh, that's got problems with her back. That's trying to decide if she wants to do surgery or not. Then a good friend of mine, a promoter named Dan Zalisco, a big promoter in Arizona, uh, the West Coast, and, and Hawaii, is, uh, is battling cancer. And we, were, we've been, we haven't seen each other in years, but we've been very, very good friends. We want to remember him in, in prayer. And then, Sherry, you'll, you'll know this lady, and Pat Upchurch. Yes, the Upchurch family. Down in Houston, every crusade that I can remember we ever preached in Houston, the Upchurch family came. And uh, Pat was always so beautiful. And she's rejoicing today because she transitioned this past week. I know how close that family is. And it's a large family. And... Uh, and I, and I know some of them watch us, and I just want I want to uh, remind them again. I sent them a message. I want to remind them again that I, I mourn for the family. I cannot mourn for Pat. The moment she stepped out of, out of this body into that new body, and, and those loved ones, she had children that have, have preceded her, and, uh, and the rejoicing and the happiness cannot be described. And so, but we do want to remember that family in prayer. Good morning, Noel Marie and Michael Mesmer. Michael Mesmer. I wish I could see his shows. I, I miss seeing him. You know, we was in California and had the theater. We would see him quite often. He would do shows and never charge us. Always donated the money to our theater. Fantastic um, magician and hypnotist. And... Uh, Anyway, doctors actually haven't even come in. I know that my doctor hasn't come in and and uh, with hypnotism and help people. Good morning, Don Morin. Don Morin, I want to show you how this person is. And Cheryl. And his wife Cheryl. I want to. I want you to see the kind of life they live. Yeah. First, they're on cruises all the time Speaking because that's their business. And if you want to go on the next summer's cruise, contact Cheryl Morin. 
Good well, morning, Kimberly Moore. Go ahead. Well, the they had some damage in their house, I think from a flood or something. And so they have to move out of the the house uh, while they work on it and redo it, the insurance. So they said they'll put them in a room. So they go down. I think I, I may be wrong. They'll probably correct me if I'm wrong. They went to Del Mar because they're, they, they're part owners in a lot of horses to be down there at the horses. And I told Sarah, I said, you know what? That's, there's just something not right about that, that they get to live that kind of life. But you know what? They've earned it and they believe it. And uh, so we, we want to bless them. I want to uh, get into our, our lesson today. I'm going to tell you about a man before I do. I, I wasn't that excited about going to, to Dallas for this fundraiser. I don't know why, but I love my wife. And I thought I will go with her. And I knew I would just be with her. We'd, we'd have a great time, of which we did. We uh, got to the function, and uh, I think there was over 300 people there. It was uh, filled to capacity. And I was, um, I was walking around and eating hors d'oeuvres and, and talking to people and everything. And I thought, well, I'm going to find Sherry. She was up by the merchandise booth. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just be with her for a while. And I started to go up where you were up, and you had to go up these stairs. And here was this gentleman that was... Uh, standing on the stairs and my first reaction was because he started looking at me and my first reaction was oh man I don't want to get into a conversation you know and uh, so I stood there and then I realized he's not going to move so I'm going to have to go by him so I started going up these stairs well he had talked to Sherry and uh, had given her his his card and stuff, and uh, uh, he manages uh, Drew Pearson, uh, several, but these are a couple of the names I, I knew, Drew Pearson of the Dallas Cowboys, uh, Ed Tutal Jones that played for the Dallas Cowboys, and he manages them. He also promotes comedy shows. And so Sherry, though, uh, looked at it and looked like it was sports, and she said, you know what? You ought to talk to my husband. He, he loves sports. He can uh, talk sports with you. And I start heading up these steps, and, and he stops me. And he hands me a card, and then he starts telling me what he, what he does. And uh, so we, we got into a conversation. This conversation did not last over probably 20 minutes. But I realized that I came to Dallas for this one person, this man right here. And early in the conversation, uh, when he said that he uh, promotes comedy shows, and I uh, told him my name, and he said, uh, the name's Sam Kinnison, I'm, 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 very I'm very familiar with that. And I said, yeah, that was my brother. And uh, he said, whatever happened to him? And I said, well, he, he uh, transitioned from this life to the next life in a head-on collision. And he took off his sunglasses and he looked in my eyes for a good 30 seconds, not a word passing between us. He looked in my eyes. And then he said, my brother passed away a week ago. And all of a sudden, I just started talking to him about the next life because I could tell he was really worried. I said, you know what we want to know? We want to know they're okay and they're happy. I can tell you, your brother is okay. Your brother is happier than he's ever been. If he could come back right now, he would not do it. No matter how much he loves you and loves his family, he, he would not do it. And I started telling him, telling him these things about what I think the next, the next transition is. When we pass from here, what we walk into. And he started weeping. And he told me I'm a tough guy. 
I said, well, I, I understand. I understand how you feel. I was a tough guy for half my life, but the other half, I'm not tough anymore. And he said, you, uh, you made me vulnerable. I have, not, I have not even cried about my brother because I'm a tough guy. And we embraced each other, hugged each other, and he just, he just weeped. And he had a, a, a lady with him, his girlfriend. And I really never said anything to her. I came on up the stairs. He walked away, and I came on up the stairs with Sherry. And then he uh, was kind of standing. He came back and was standing back with, with his girlfriend. And Sherry said, I want to take a picture of you two. So I said, all right. So I went down. I said, my wife wants to take a picture of, of, uh, of us. So I took a picture with the, with the two of them. And then they had a photo thing where you stand still but the camera goes clear around you. And, and so I was telling you need to do that. And she goes, you ain't ever going to get him on that. And sure enough, he, he did. And he told, she told Sherry, said, something's happened to him. And they kept using the term, he's a tough guy. He's a tough guy. You know what? I never ever, I never, he, he never asked if I was a preacher. I never told him I was a preacher. I'm not. I'm an influencer. I want to influence you. But we both, because he didn't want to be there that night, he told me. We both knew that we were drawn together for that one thing. I want to, I want to start off with our lesson today. I want to give you uh, some quotes that are true. A true master is not the one with the most students, but is the one who creates the most masters. That's a true master. A true leader is not the one with the most students. No. But he is the one who creates the most leaders. That's a true leader. A true king is not the one with most subjects, with the most subjects, but one who leads the most to royalty. A true teacher is not the one with the most knowledge, but one who leads, or one who causes the most others to know. That's a great, that's a true teacher. And a true God is not one with the most servants, but one who serves the most, thereby making gods of all others. Now we've been told that what I've just told you is not true. It's the opposite of true. That's what we've been told. You've been told you cannot attain godliness and that you should never claim to. That's what we've been told. That's why we have the low self-image that we have. It is an example of contradiction found in your understanding of what the messengers honored by your religions have said. Whatever religion, because I minister to everyone. I don't just minister to, to Christians. I minister to Hindus. I minister to, to Muslims, to Islamics, to Jews, to Catholics, to Protestants, even though they're Christians, but I'll get a little more close to home. I minister to everyone. Everyone. But in every one of these religions, you have found that you're in your understanding that there are contradictions that's honored by those religions. Here is a new revelation I'm going to give to you. I want you to really perk up and listen to it. Every person is as special as every other person who has ever lived lives now, or will ever live. You, you're special. You're as special as anyone has ever been. You are all, now listen, 
You are all messengers. We, uh, sometimes I hesitate to put pictures of celebrities and, and people that are our friends because I want to tell you right now, I'll tell you who my family is right now. It's you. You are my family. I, I don't want to miss this for anything. I want to see you, I want to minister to you every Sunday morning. You have become family to me. You're, you're just as important as any celebrity, any sports star that has ever lived. You're just as important, listen, as any master has ever lived. Mahatma Gandhi, Jesus Christ, Joseph Smith. It doesn't make any difference. You are as special as every other person who has ever lived is living right now or is going to live. You are messengers, every one of you. You are carrying a message to life every single day. You may think you're nothing. You may think you're, you're going, well, Bill, you're not talking about me. There ain't nobody listens to me. Well, let me tell you all something. Everything, everything you think or say or do is a message. I'm not any more special than you are. Going to Dallas and, and running into this man is not because I'm, I'm more special. It's not because this man was more special. There was other people that I talked to because I have realized, and I don't go out searching for them, but I realized that I'm a messenger. You are a messenger. Your whole life is your teaching. Man, this is so good. I hope you listen to every bit of this. You see, if you thought that others tomorrow would walk the same path that you've taken today, let me ask you a question. Would you take the same path? If you thought that your children would walk the exact same path that you have in your life, would you take the same path? You see, you may not think that people don't look at you. But they do. They do. Every day. They do. The grocery store. Your job. Your sporting events. Whatever you do, your hobbies. People look at you and you're teaching them. Man, this is so good. You see, everyone whose life you touch is touched by your example, not by your words, by your example of living your life. And I'm not talking about uh, godly life or whatever they call that. I was in a in a bar area, I don't. I just don't happen to drink. And Sharon and I were sitting with two other people, and they started talking about the path that they've taken in their life and the pressures they've had in their life. And in this bar, Sherry and I are teaching. We're teaching. Why? Because we're messengers. You are a messenger. You are giving them data about your life by example every single day. Man, then you wonder why I love you so much. You are telling them how it is, how things operate, how things are, and how they will emulate you. They will copy you. They will take your data into their world. 
and they'll make it part of their own lives. God in you comes through when you don't even realize it. That God in you is shining forth. Your children will do this. They watch everything you do. And if you start representing that God in you, if you start representing the secrets to success and prosperity and health, your children will emulate the exact same thing. What path do you want to take? It's up to you. It's up to you. You take whatever path you want. All people, family or not, who see you and know of you are touched by you. And you don't even know it. Everything starts with you. Everything. The fact is that you know, you all know inherently and in, intuitively what works and what does not work in getting you where you say you choose to go and in creating what you choose to create. We all know, and we may not want to admit it, but we all know inherently and in our intuition, what works and what doesn't work. You have within you what I call the internal guidance system. And you can call this whatever you wish. Intuition, hunch, confidence, or a feeling in your bones. I've had all of it. But you cannot deny that it is there. You can't deny that. It's a greater awareness the more you rely on it, the more you will know that you can rely on it. Just rely on it. Sherry and I were talking the other day, I think when we was going to Dallas, about the paths that we have taken down through our life. And as we looked, we realized that whatever, and it was the God in us, we may not even have known it back then, years and years ago, but it was a God in us that gave us that feeling, you need to do this. You need to lead. You need to give up this church. You need to, you need to go to California and manage Sam. You need to open up a theater. You need to do all these things. And we, all, and we listened to that, what we call that voice inside. And it has always worked. Always. Now listen. Oh, sure, don't tell me i got to get off here. There's no path. I'm, this is going to get deep, and I know there are times some of you go, man, I can't handle this, especially if it seems like it's bucking your Christianity or whatever. That's why I've said many times, I think you're better off if you hear me and haven't been to church rather than be in church all your life and then you hear me because now you're battling over what you've been taught and what God's given us. But there's no path to God more direct than any other path. Let me repeat that. There's no path direct to God than any other path. No religion. Sherry better grab something. There's no religion that is the one true religion. No people, now this is really going to get up, upsetting. There are no people that are the chosen people. And no prophet that is the greatest prophet. We have to set aside every assumption we have made in the creation of our beliefs. We're climbing a mountain. See, the problems you have created. See, I'm going to take maybe three or four more minutes. The problems you have created is spiritual problems. It cannot be solved by political means. It cannot be solved by economic means. It cannot be solved by, or it can only be solved by a change in your beliefs. Your present beliefs are turning your world upside down. You can blame Biden, you can blame whoever you want to blame. 
And if you want to change that, do it November the 8th or right now if you've got early voting. But vote and change that. But I want to tell you something. It can only be solved by a change in your beliefs for you, your world. Your present beliefs are turning your world upside down because you're, leave, you're believing all this stuff. You are tearing yourselves apart, ripping yourselves to pieces, pulling yourselves in every direction, poisoning yourselves with your beliefs. What do you believe? I hope I've been changing that. The new revelation that I'm telling you about today is choosing to be courageous enough to explore and examine new understandings. That's what I bring to you. You see, organized religion in the end is nothing more than a system of beliefs. We have been taught that God has things he wants you to be, to do, and to have. Then we've been taught that that he does not want you to be what things he doesn't want you to be, he doesn't want you to do, and he doesn't have. We've been told that these are expectations and requirements, and if they're not met, woe be unto you. You really pissed off God. Uh-oh, Sharon just gave me a look. Well, you really upset God. Well, let me tell you something. God is all there is all there ever was and all there will ever be. There's nothing that is not God. And God is therefore wanting and needing nothing at all from you. Man, doesn't that take a burden off of you? Practically every holy scripture of all the religions of the world has a long list of requirements that God has placed on the human race according to them. They involve behavior, rituals, observances, and even such things as diet and clothing. But I'm going to tell you something. It's all a bunch of hooey. God has no requirements for you. He wants you to come to your true self of the God in you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for this lesson that you've given us, this new revelation you put in our heart. Let it operate in our lives, in every part of our being. Those that need a healing, let them have it today. Those that need a financial blessing, Lord, give them a, a blessing they cannot contain. Let them have joy, peace, and understanding. Now give you all the praise. Amen. God love you. I love you. Sherry loves you. God bless America. And good afternoon, Bob and Kathy Henry and Alfonso Nero Brown. Thank you for joining us. I think Alfonso Nero Brown is coming out here in about a week or something. I think so. And I think we're going to try to meet up for lunch or something. Anyway, God love you. I'll see you next week.